She's been calling for it, and she finally gets her shot on the international scene. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event. Live from HBF Stadium Festival Hall. Melbourne Pavilion. Not even backstage, we're literally outside. Was that the best fight card in Australian MMA history? Call me crazy, but make sure you call me when I'm right. Be good at the Aussie MMA Instagram page and give us a bit of glow up because... We're killing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Australian MMA podcast. My name is Mitch Timley. Your host today's guest is Jamie Eden, and she started her professional mixed martial arts career after a pretty good striking background career. Uh, Jamie Eden, and she was one, two, and one. That's one draw. Uh, and she's had some highly publicized sort of issues with trying to get fights and then falling through. And of course, we've had her on the show before. She's uh, talked about her. Uh, beat down controversy that happened at the weigh-in uh, where she you know didn't make weight the fight ended up getting cancelled but the kind of whole backstory to all of that is the fact that she has struggled to get fights in the past it was such an issue and it's it's a big it's a big issue in terms of Australian MMA especially for women and at that high echelon of if you ever talk to Casey O'Neill, Lisa Kiriaku, Amina Hadea, Jacinta Austin, uh, Annie Thatcher, all of them, they will all talk about the, the difficulties of finding fights regionally. Like a lot goes into sort of bringing fighters in internationally. Of course, it's a big cost. Uh, and just sort of to get that experience and that exposure uh, for young female fighters in Australia is still very limited. Uh, in the sport. Jamie Eden has pushed through that. She has fought everyone she can, sometimes twice, uh, and it's given her a, a massive opportunity on September 20th in Kansas City. She's taking on uh, Abby Montez uh, at Invicta, which is a women's only promotion, and it's uh, responsible for, I mean, uh, Cyborg has fought there. Uh, you've got uh, Laura Sanko, I uh, believe Ronda Rousey even fought there. I don't know. I haven't done the research, which I could have done. It would have taken me 12 seconds. Uh, but uh, I'll do it now. I'm back. No Ronda Rousey, but like Began Anderson, famous Australian fighter. Look, a lot, a lot of fighters uh, have fought on Invicta, and it's a really good place to go, especially if you're in the bigger weight classes uh, for Australian uh, MMA uh, or just MMA in general. Uh, and if you want to make your career into an international promotion, Invicta just might be the one. So uh, as we've spent, you know, 47 minutes of real time into this intro, uh, we're going to hear from our friends at uh, PRP Global. And then we're going to find out from Jamie Ederton about just how this fight came about, why it's so important and what we can expect from her. Fuel the fight with Australian-made MMA-inspired streetwear and support the next generation of MMA superstars. Delivering unprecedented support to the Aussie MMA scene, support PRP Global on their journey. 100% of profits go to the fighters. Check PRP Global out today. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, Jamie Ederton, who's finally going international. <laughs> How's it feel? Mate, it feels good. It feels good. It actually doesn't feel real yet. It kind of just feels like I'm just going to go fight DNA G again at fucking XFC, you know what I mean? Not <laughs> <laughs> oh. again. Never again. Oh. Like, but... <laughs> it, it must be so frustrating as a female in mixed martial arts in Australia that takes it so seriously. There's about seven of you guys and you're across like four different weight classes. Like, is it frustrating of course trying to get all those fights but kind of how good does it feel to kindly get that attention and, and now you're on a, a massive promotion like Invicta yeah like it feels really good I've I've obviously worked really hard for it and you know there's a few girls in my division and we're kind of all fighting each other and and you know trying to get to the next level but but those other girls aren't doing what I'm doing you know I'm fighting the best of the best I'm, I'm fighting out of my weight class um and, and you know those girls aren't doing it so you know, that's why I'm, you know, going to where I'm going and, and they're not. So. Where do you kind of get the sort of mental strength? I think you were one and two and a draw at some, it was like something along those lines, which is not the most appealing record, especially as a female in Australian MMA. Like normally you'd have to kind of get noticed. You think you'd have to be 10 and 0, starch and everyone in the first round. What did you kind of have to do to sort of dig deep to go, okay, let's, let's build this positive record while still getting fights and not exactly being able to choose your way to victory? 
Yeah, like um, it, it was hard because this, this time last year, as you said, I was one win, two losses, one draw. Um, and I was in camp to fight Janae and I was at a point in my career, like I knew that I was kind of destined for big things, but I just was like, fuck, I can't, nothing's coming together. I'm just losing or I'm getting a draw or nothing was kind of coming from it. Um, and then with the Janae camp, I absolutely did everything that I could. I wrestled, I, I did everything that I could to, to be as best prepared as I could, um, because it was the only fight that I really had where I've had a full camp. Um, every other fight I've kind of taken on short notice or, um, you know, the girls take forever to say yes or no, and I don't really know who I'm fighting. So this fight with Janae, I kind of, I had a 12 week camp. So I was able to leave no stone unturned. And then when I beat her, it obviously started the momentum of winning. And, um, then I beat Gaze and I beat Jenna. And, um, yeah, we're, we're on the way to the USA now. So it's good. When, when did you feel like this was all possible? Cause like we said, at one, two and one, you're probably going, Oh God, it's going to be a while. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Look for the Janae fight. I, I, I after that fight, I was like, okay, it's finally coming together now because I mean, I've been striking for so long. I had, you know, 25 or 24 fights as a striker. And when I came over to MMA, I just, nothing was gelling. It was like I was striking and I was wrestling and I wasn't, nothing was really flowing from one to the other to the other. And then with the Janae fight, everything went, you know, it was just, it was keep it simple, stupid. And I, 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 I did my striking was basic, my wrestling was basic, but it was class. And I showed that in the fight and was able to dominate over three rounds. So all of a sudden it just came together. Um, And yeah, that was. How did uh, the Invicta fight uh, come about? I mean, do you just, were you reaching out to people? I know that you claimed, I think after your last victory, you said, man, like I've got to go international, like give me my chance type thing. Obviously they've, they've done that, but how does the whole process work? How did this come about? Yeah, so uh, my manager, Jeremy Green, he um, has been working really, really, really hard. Um, he's doing a lot more work and he's getting paid for for me and both Sean Gauchi. So let's, I'm just going to give him a massive shout out because, you know, he has to put up a lot of shit from us. Um, but, yeah, it was getting to a point where I've been offered multiple boxing fights. I got offered a, um, a really, really good fight for really good money um, that I had to turn down in boxing. And um, it was like the universe was trying to test me. It kept coming back with more and more and more. And then Jez and obviously Ryan Dunstan, they were both like, no, nah, something's going to come. you just got to stay patient. And um, I think you kind of know me well enough now. I want to fight. I'd fight every weekend if I could. I don't want to just fight once a year. Um, I want to keep fighting. And then Jez was talking to Invicta and they said, yeah, we want to get her on, but we just don't have a, a date or a time or anything like that. Um, and I was like, far out. Like, because Gates and Eda kept calling me out. And I was like, Fuck, I'm going to have to fight her again because I just want to fight. And um, Hex were also trying to find me someone and they had turn down after turn down after turn down from multiple girls in the States um, to fight me on their show. So it got to a point where I was like, fuck, I'm not going to get anything. And then all of a sudden, Jess is like, and Victor had said yes. Um, and that was five weeks out from the show. Um, and, of course, the first thing I did was call my dietitian and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> can I make the weight? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah, you can. Let's do it. Yeah, how much does the sort of dieting weight stuff scare you? Um, look, I, I, I train year-round. I'm in the gym 365 days a year. So it wasn't at the fact of the short notice that I'm not going to be fit enough, I'm not going to be strong enough, I'm not going to be ready. Um, but for me to get to further weight, as you know, it, it takes a lot of work um, to get there. So I have been maintaining my weight at a weight that I can kind of get it within striking distance. Um, yeah, and I called Christoph and he just said, look, it's it's going to be hard, but you can do it. Um, so you know, that's what I do this for. Nothing nothing comes easy. So yeah, no, it's uh, it's good, and I feel like Invicta is 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 a good place for you as well because I feel like they really believe in in the women and the heavier weight classes. That feels weird to say to a woman, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but like they. Well, they <laughs> but like they do, they kind of, they believe in sort of the 45s and so, and I feel like that they're really going to kind of look after you and, and respect the art that you put forward. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've been t- speaking a lot with the Invicta president, Shannon Knapp. And, you know, as soon as she, as soon as we kind of put my name across her table, she was like, absolutely, we want her. Um, and, you know, with my weight class being at 66, there's only two places I could go and that's mm. Bellator or Invicta. Um, and Bellator aren't signing at the moment or they, they're not building their division at the moment. Um, so Invicta was, is the next best thing and they're still a great organisation with a world championship belt. So 
you know, it's, it's one or the other. And I'm so grateful to investors to be able to give me an opportunity because I'm begging for one, you know, like I just want to get over there and, and fight the first girls. I'm sick of fighting the same girls over and over. No one wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Although I'd, I'd watch you fight the same girls over and over again. They're always entertaining. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't build that profile that, that you deserve. Is it one and done? Is it, are you kind of quote unquote signed? Like, how's it working? Yeah, multi-fight deal. Um, I was meant to fight uh, another girl. I won't give you any names, but I signed the contract to fight an undefeated uh, in prospect, but she unfortunately had to pull out because of uh, an injury. So I ha- took to fight with Abby Montez. Um, so so when I beat her, I'm hopeful that I can get another fight before the year's end and then hopefully be in you know, talks to, to fight their number one, number two girls and, and then continue on the path to get a world champ belt. Have you been uh, keeping an eye on Sarah Collins lately? Obviously, she's moved up to the main event of the the Bellator PFL. You guys have danced before. Have you uh, been keeping an eye on? Because obviously, she's flying the flag for the the. Uh, I hate saying bigger girls. <laughs> but yeah, the the bigger girls in in Australian MMA. Yeah, I mean, all respect to Sarah. She's been doing a great job. She's beaten some bloody killers out there, you know. And she's she's main eventing a big show in London. So good on her. But. I just want her to remember that I'm coming, you know, like I haven't forgotten I'm coming just because we're in two different organizations. Um, you know, I, I just want to fight her because I feel like it would be such a different fight now because I'm, I'm such, such a different fighter now. And I've actually had more fights than her now. So it's kind of, it, I'm kind of more experienced. It's kind of weird, but um, yeah, I just want to get that one back because it's, I have a, an emotional connection to it. But honestly, if I, I'll fight anyone. I'll just fight whoever they put in front of me. It's never going to be a no. Starting your career at kind of one and two and one uh, kind of made you go, well, now I don't really care who I fight. Like, it's just like I'm not protecting the O or anything. Yeah, I, I've never been I've never been one to pad my record. And that's why I know that, you know, I, when I get to the world stage, I'm going to be ready because I've already fought world-class people. So, you know, I've got Janae Harding and Jenna Fabian. Those girls have come from where I want to go. So it's not like I'm padding my record with people who are bums, you know. Like, so, yeah, I'm going to be ready. And, and when I when I last fought Gina and we had that draw, I was literally sitting out the back of XXT and I was so upset. And I said to Ryan, what the fuck am I going to do now? Like, there's no one left. I can't fight Gina again. Like, there's no one left. And Ryan's just like, just trust me, something will come up, something will come up. And I'm laying in bed on Sunday morning and Jeremy calls and he's like, hey, got your fight against Janae Harding. And I was like, what? This is fucking weird. So, that yeah, everything happens and it's definitely my path to to, to be in this position. Um, it, it doesn't just happen. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's destiny, I guess. Are you um are you a little jelly of uh, Lisa Kiriakou that Hex flew Cynthia Calvillo in? <laughs> No, because like oh, I'm, I'm super stoked for Lisa because she deserves it. She's worked hard and and um. But in saying that, um, Hex did try. They tried for me to get someone. They they offered money. They offered they offered me no money <laughs> as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't get anyone. They I think they asked five or six girls from from America and they all said no for different reasons. Um. So and it was just getting to a point where I was just like, well, it's it's three weeks away or it's whatever. And I just didn't have enough time to prepare for a five round fight. But um, yeah, I have a little bit of FOMO because I wanted to be able to win a regional belt before I went overseas. Um, but it doesn't matter. I just want the best fights and the biggest money and, and on the best shows. How far away do you think an Invicta belt is? I would say two or three, maybe four fights, depending. I mean, if I'm, if I'm devastatingly getting TKOs or KOs or finishes or subs or whatever, um, or having really, really good performances, then hopefully it's sooner rather than later. But we'll see. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, wrap this up for me. September 20th, you, you get your f- opportunity you've been calling for for years. How does this go? Well, you know what? It, 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 I, I was saying it to you before. It's really hard for her to prepare for me. I'm bringing the pressure. I'm bringing that right hand that everyone knows that no one can stop. And I'm bringing the wrestling. I've been doing a lot of work with Dave Martinez and, yeah, that that should be enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I absolutely love it. Best of luck. No one deserves this sort of opportunity yeah. more. You've been calling it for a very long time. Uh, go out, start you, and start talking some shit. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, I do-